Right. As of 12 April this year, uh, almost 300,000 South African healthcare workers had received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. This as part of the country's Sisonke COVID-19 vaccine study. 50 of these experienced serious side effects that were followed up by researchers, while the majority of participants experienced mild to moderate side effects. The early safety data was reported in the New England Journal of Medicine this week. To find out what some of the findings were, we speak to one of the authors of the study, Ian Sana, the CEO of Right to Care. Mr. Sana, thank you very much for your time here on ENCA. Just tell us what are some of the findings, especially with the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, which did cause a little bit of a scare when the U.S. Um, halted that rollout. Uh, yes, thank you very much for your interest. So uh, reporting this on behalf of the lead authors, Dr. Simba Takuva and Asbi Takalani, uh, and the senior authors are well known to everyone, uh, Glenda Gray and Linda Gale Becker. So we, we reviewed the first 289,000 and uh, 288,368 uh, uh, participants who had received the Johnson Johnson vaccine to the date that we decided to uh, report. Uh, this was the date just before the, in, uh, before the hold uh, when the U.S. had in fact uh, placed the, the, the vaccine on hold. Uh, and we reported that indeed around 11 percent had reported adverse events and um, these were 11,000 actually sorry 11,000 had reported adverse events that were mild to moderate uh, and then that there were 50 severe adverse events that required follow-up uh, the most important of which have been uh, the the uh, 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 thrombosis associated um, uh, or thrombosis and pulmonary emboli uh, five of these events were considered to be related to uh, the vaccine uh, and however they occurred in people with underlying um, thromboembolic uh, disease, in other words uh, other risk factors for thrombosis. Um, we in addition uh, looked at the, uh, unfortunately one of those uh, persons uh, did uh, actually die and uh, she had been vaccinated 23 days prior to the onset of the thromboembolus, uh, and, uh, but she had significant other uh, risk factors for thromboembolism. Uh, and uh, so in principle, although this, is a, this does occur, and our recommendation is that uh, people who have had vaccination and develop, develop one of uh, severe calf or leg pain um, that does not go away, or severe abdominal pain or severe relent unrelenting headaches um, that they do in fact uh, check in with their doctor. Uh, the safety desk for Sasonke is still open. Um, every vaccinee who received a Sasonke J&J vaccine has got those numbers. Um, that same safety desk is actually supporting the Pfizer rollout. Um, that is through the national uh, the COVID number that uh, has been used throughout the pandemic. Uh, so these events do occur. Uh, um, we would also like to emphasize that, um, that COVID itself is uh, re uh, related or is, um, is known to actually cause thromboembolic disease. Uh, at, a, at a very significant rate. And uh, of people who are hospitalized with COVID, 85% have got features of thromboembolism uh, and with raised D-dimers. Mm. And uh, I just want to come in there in terms of the thrombosis. COVID, 40% have got uh, thromboembolic disease mm. as well. So the case rates here are much lower than the risk that would emerge with uh, people who would have COVID. All right. So in terms of the thrombosis, I'd like us to please just explain. This is, I assume, the blood clotting that the Johnson & Johnson uh, vaccine was stopped for um, a, a few months ago. Am I correct? So um, in South Africa, we have had cases of people and, as you said, just that one person passing away as a result. Yeah, so this is technically gets a bit complex, right? So mm -hmm. thrombosis, you're correct, is blood clots. And uh, clotting, a thrombosis is a blood clot in a vein or artery at a particular place. A embolism is a piece of that clot uh, breaking off and traveling uh, through the heart to either the lungs or the brain. Uh, and the, um, 
the, the, the reason the j and vaccine was stopped is a idiopathic occurrence, idiopathic meaning of unknown origin. Uh, we don't know why it happens. We do know it's associated with uh, antibodies that form against uh, one of the clotting uh, profiles platelets. Mm -hmm. um, this is a syndrome that has been coined as vaccine-induced thrombocytopenia and thrombosis, which means that the platelets are low, but despite those platelets being low, clots are forming at the same time that bleeding occurs. Mm -hmm. um, that rare event was not published in uh, this paper, because we did not have any cases of uh, vaccine-induced uh, thrombocytopenia or VIT, it's called BITT. We had not had any of those events by the time this publication um, was, was printed, mm. went into press. Uh, and uh, so in principle, uh, there are, it's a rare occurrence. It's occurred in around uh, 28 cases worldwide. Mm. Uh, it led to the interruption of uh, J&J use. Uh, the FDA with, uh, uh, put a pause, and the FDA reviewed all available data. It is also associated with AstraZeneca vaccine. There are cases that have occurred with Pfizer and Moderna, vaccine, so it appears to be more related to uh, the spike protein and the, mm -hmm. uh, in my view, my personal view, more related to the spike protein of the vaccine mm -hmm. of a coronavirus rather than, uh, the, um, the, than any particular vaccine. Mm -hmm. All right, All right. And, and according to the report as well, 12 participants had... So again, we are really asking uh, for people who develop calf pain, ab mm. severe ab abdominal pain. I just have to come in there, um, if you would allow me, please, uh, Mr. Sanna. Um, I wanted to ask about uh, your report that says 12 of the participants had allergic reaction. Um, what exactly were these reactions? In, in, the, in the main, they were there before, so they're people who were allergic anyway who had a background history of being allergic. Mm -hmm. um, what, um, of those, uh, I believe three were anaphylactic reactions. In other words, a very acute onset anaphylaxis. Um, that, uh, and in all three, there had been a history of allergic reactions. Um, and in all these cases, they were treated immediately at the vaccine site or within the short period afterwards and mm -hmm. all recovered. So. Uh, the, the you know people who are predisposed to say penicillin allergy or bee allergy are at more risk and need to be monitored more carefully at the time of vaccination. Right. That actually happens with Pfizer as well. So uh, you know in, in principle we know that these uh, allergic reactions do occur. All right, thank you very much, Professor Ian Sana. He is the CEO of Right to Care and co-author of this report into South Africa's Sisonke uh, project, which was, of course, the Johnson & Johnson jab, which started with healthcare workers.